Hi, Zach. I'm a big fan. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me, man. I, uh, I'm very excited. So let's just jump right in. Uh, the first Cheaper by the Dozen came out in 1950, and I could be totally wrong, but I feel like having a family with 10 children was maybe a little more common 70 years ago uh, than it is today. So does that change the dynamic of this story for you when it's set in modern times in 2022? Well, yeah, I think uh, most people would say this is an exaggerated, even though there are, of course, people with 10 kids, uh, an exaggerated, heightened reality version of a family. But that's what makes it fun. I think that's why people tap into it. They go, oh, my goodness, we got a lot going on in our house with two kids and, and, and a pet. Can you imagine 10 kids and two dogs and and two exes that are in and out and the the, the mayhem of it all the, the the extreme of it all is i think why people tap into it they go they they, they see a, a a heightened reality of their own family somewhere in there yeah i have uh one son and you're right i can't imagine i can't imagine having 10 that would be insane so on the subject of remakes the remakes are becoming such a prevalent part of the industry now i think and, and cheaper by the dozen is a movie that's been remade twice now when you sign on for something like this like do you do you go revisit the movies that came before to learn from them what you like about them what you don't like about them or or do you just try to detach yourself as much as possible from the previous entries and go in fresh. Yeah. I, I didn't even really know about the original one be until I got on board the project and, and learned about it. The Steve Martin ones, I was too old to, to, to have been the right target demo for them. And I certainly didn't want to go back and look at like the greatest, one of the greatest comedy legends of all time and see what he was doing. And, you know, Kenya Barris, script was, was quite different. You know, it was, it was, it was a blended family. It's 2022. The character was, was nothing like um, Steve Martin's character. So I just, I, I never went and watched any of them. I just kind of went with my gut on, on how to play it. Gotcha. I got to tell you, man, uh, garden state to this day, is one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. I thank top you. three are probably Purple Rain, Dirty Dancing, and Garden State. Wow, thank so, you so much. Yeah, so you've got a knack for picking out great music. So I need a song suggestion. What's one current song that most people probably haven't heard that you love and think is something they need to hear? There's a song, there's this artist that's breaking now called whose name is Lizzie McAlpine, and she has a new song called All My Ghosts that I think is really beautiful. So there's your recommendation. I'm going to check it out after this. I can't wait. I can't wait to listen to it. Um, last question for you, man. Uh, so I'm with comicbook.com. I got to get a nerd question in. Uh, your Scrubs partner in crime, Donald, just made a superhero debut as Booster Gold. I so, know. I've, I've been learning about this because, you know, we do the podcast together and I uh, fake doctors, real friends where we rewatch Scrubs and and talk about it. And I've, I've been hearing um, that the, a lot of people clamoring for me to play Ted something. Blue Beetle? Is yeah. that is what, that who you're talking about? What's Blue Beetle's original name? Uh, Ted, Ted uh, something. Oh, come on, dude. You're a comic. I know, player. I know. I'm 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 gonna you're I'm you're gonna give me so much crap now because of this. They're, they're gonna play this and everybody's gonna be like, he's based on Blue Beetles. He's the second Blue Beetle. I know that much. And I know what? he gets killed in the 80s. That's all I can tell you. Anyway, uh, anyway, when Donald did Ford. that. Cord, that's yes. it. Wow, yes. you pulled it. I pulled yeah. it. I, I don't know anything about comic books. I must be honest, but um, a, a lot of people on my social media were like, "Now that Donald did that, you have to, you guys have to do this, and you have to be Ted Cord." Yeah, actually, I didn't even think of that, and now that you said it, it's brilliant, and I would love to see that. So I think we one hundred percent need to get you on as Blue. Now, you know more. You know more. You're probably more dialed into the comic book uh, universe clearly. So you tell people, I'll be Ted Cord. I will. I will. I'm going to start it on Twitter as soon as we leave. I'm going to listen to the song that you just recommended. I don't remember her name and I'm not Liz, going to try to remember. Lizzie, Lizzie McAlpine. I'm, 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 Lizzie like McAlpine. Her, I'm like her publicist. I think she's going to be a big star. Well, I can't wait to check that out and I can't wait to see you as Blue Beetle. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Zach. Thank you, brother. Uh, hi, Gabrielle. It's so exciting to talk to you. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you, too. Yeah, yeah. This is, I'm a big fan. So this, this, is, uh, this is thrilling for me. Um, the first Cheaper by the Dozen, let's just jump into it, uh, came out in 1950. Yeah. And I could be totally off base, but I feel like having a family with 10 children back then was maybe a little bit more common than it is in 2022. Uh, so does that change the dynamic of the story for you when it's set in modern times? 
Not really at all. And I think for a lot of communities of color, we live in multi-generational households. So you 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 might only your in your immediate family, it might be, I don't know, four or five, but then you've got grandma, you might have an aunt, you might have, you know, a cousin, a family friend that all lives under the same roof that you're all responsible for. So this is pretty standard for, for us. Um but also with blended families, you know, it depends on depending on when you started your family, you know, you could end up with like, you know, 10 total kids eventually, you know, perhaps um, that you are responsible for. So I think it's still relevant, um, different perhaps to have so many. And it's certainly different on in, in media. We rarely position families like this as uh, as uh, as something to celebrate um, or worthy of celebration. Usually we position anything other than traditional, which I hate that word. I think it's and I think it was it's BS. It's basically created to shame folks who who figure out how to survive in their communities. Um, but like you rarely get to see different kinds of families uh, represented, much less celebrated on, you know, on the big screen. So we thought this was amazing, multi, you know, multiracial, multicultural, different levels of ability. You got co-parents, multiple animals. We tried, we, sh- we gave you everything. We, gave, you got, we, we yeah. shoved it all yeah. in there. No, that's a great answer. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I, speaking of which, I only have, I have one son. Um, I also, but I have two brothers and a stepbrother and my mom always says she loves us all the same. No favorites. Now that you've played a mom to so many children in one movie, do you have an idea if my mom is, uh, is she, is she, is she telling the truth or am I my mom's secret favorite? Just between you and I, you are your mom's secret favorite. Um, but you know, like, like with parents, like no one will ever admit it. But how it comes out is it's whoever's easiest, the one who's not doesn't always have a thing, doesn't always have an issue, doesn't always you're not always having to service some challenge of theirs. So yeah, the favorites usually become the ones that are easiest and most like that parent. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I am um, absolutely my dad's absolute favorite. And my sisters understand this and we all just move along. I don't see how you couldn't be. So I totally get it. Can I just talk to you for one second about Bring It On? Uh, yes. Still such a fun movie. And while it's got all these direct to video sequels, none of them involve the original cast. And there's this trend now where the, they have these 20 year later sequels. Has that has there ever been any talks about reuniting the cast where you guys now have children? And if there were, is that something you'd have any interest in revisiting? Yeah, no, we all have an interest in revisiting it during the pandemic, during the tw- around the 20th anniversary of Bring It On. Um, we all were you know, together all the time doing these panels and talking about the movie and the making of the movie and all of our wild hijinks. Um, but yeah, then we got really serious about we should update this, you know, like bring it up to, you know, like, where are they now? Um, but now that, uh, you know, Kirsten is up for an Oscar, I don't know, uh, you know, that that, that uh, twofer with her and the husband, they may want to keep that uh, train on the tracks. So I don't know if she wants to you know, change gears that dramatically and, and come come back to, to be Torrance again. Um, but maybe I don't know, maybe she wants some dance moves after being out on the out on this i don't know where they filmed you know you're the dog but maybe she'll want some some more dance and and hip-hop in her life i think so i think it'd be a lot of fun yeah no uh i'm out of time thank you so much gabriel for talking with me it was a real pleasure and i hope you have a great rest of your day no thank you you too hi gail how are you doing i'm good chris nice to talk to you yeah thank you for taking the time uh so um to kick things off here, uh, sorry, I just lost my questions. Oh, there they are. Okay. So the first Cheaper by the Dozen came out in 1950, and I could be totally wrong, but I feel like having a family with 10 children was maybe a little more commonplace 70 mm-hmm. years ago than it was today. So does that change the dynamic of this story for you when you said it in 2022? Well, I think part of the inspiration for Kenya and Jenny to set their script in 2022 and make a family this big believable was to really embrace the notion of a blended family. Cause I think what was sort of unheard of in the fifties of just divorce was so uncommon then. I mean, I think actually taking in family members was common, but you know, transracial adoption, like all these things are such a huge part of the fabric of American life now Um, and divorces and blended and loving step parents who are doing their best uh, family businesses, moms and dads being partners. 
were all ways that we just really wanted to bring the movie into the now. I think the 50s version, the 80s version, they were so iconic and great movies. Um, did I say 80s? 90s? Anyway. I think, I think it was 2003. If I, if, <laughs> I'm if totally I off. Right. I've only said it 90 times. Uh, the Steve <laughs> Martin version. Um, they were just iconic, hilarious movies for their generation. And we're like, let's be one for this generation. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of uh, staying on the topic of that, uh, you know, remakes are, are becoming so prevalent uh, in the industry today. And Cheaper by the Dozen is a movie that has been remade twice now. When you sign on to direct something like this, do, do you revisit the movies before to learn from them, what you like about them, what you don't like about them? Or, or do you feel like you just want to detach yourself as much as possible from the previous entries and come in fresh? Well, I really loved watching all of them because I just wanted to like ground myself in the tradition of these movies and really be intentional and aware about what I was doing differently and what was an homage. There's a moment at the end of the big family movie scene where the kids are all asleep and the uh, Gab, Zoe and Paul are watching TV. And it's just like a little Easter egg for fans of the 1950s version, but they're actually watching the 1950s version but it's just a teeny little Easter egg that yeah. I just wanted to, I feel like people sleep on that a little bit because Steve Martin and Bonnie Hunt was so funny. And so the one that everybody knows. Yeah. Um, and also just the way that, you know, Sean directed that amazing chaos breakfast scene with the frog. Um, I just was like, that was so beautifully done and so well done. We tried to make ours a little bit more grounded um, and at one point I sort of had a panic attack. Like I'm trying to fill the shoes of this hilarious zany over the top comedy with this really grounded material. And I actually called John in a bit of a sweat and he was like, you're making a totally different movie. Be confident in your movie. And I, it just was like such a great benediction. It was so generous of him. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, actually, I, I, I kind of wanted to talk about this because this is your first movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so you've had a ton of experience, though, directing TV shows. Uh, but what's the biggest difference that you notice between directing an episode for a television show versus directing a movie? There was a really great opportunity in directing a movie where when you're doing a TV show, the template is set. The actors have been cast. The wardrobe is already established. The sets are already there. The crew has become a well-oiled machine unto themselves. It's almost like you're a guest who happens to be in charge that week. And in a feature, you know, I'm also a comedy writer. A feature is like seeing the blank page and it can be daunting, but it's also really inspiring because it can be anything. And I remember one day my production designer said, oh, I'm building the house. Is there a certain place where you want the door? Are there certain features you want? And I was like, we are building a set to jokes you know, by we can create like a bowling alley effect for the race because we're building it fresh. And we got to cast the kids and build our own family and the visual template of the wardrobe. We chose to make the show in like a sort of heightened, beautiful movie that's relatable, but just has an extra sparkle. So getting to really create that world and literally and metaphorically build that house was just an amazing opportunity.